Hi guys, welcome back to our channel Q Familia. So there's a really well-known university in Canada called York University and they're opening a new campus in Markham Unionville. So they had a whole information set up and we decided to go so we could get some new information. When we reached here, we couldn't find the entrance. So as you can see in this next few clips, we were just roaming around the entire university trying to find where to go. Even though they had direction and um, signs on the road, we still had no idea where we were going. We also went to a karate parking lot, but that wasn't where we were supposed to be. So we've also posted a video of Kiel Campus on our channel. So if you want to check it out, please do so. And we'll also post a link on the description box below. As you can see, the construction is still going on as this campus won't be open until fall of 2024. Through this day, we were facing a rainy weather. So after 20 minutes, we finally realized that we had to go park at the GO station. The station was quite a bit distance from New York University, so here you can see us walking towards it. So the actual event wasn't at the university, but it was parallel from it at this community center. So the front table was giving bags right as we walked in. Then we found out they were having an information presentation about the new computer science program at the Markham campus. So we decided to go watch and, it. Uh, so here's our presentation. This is a new program that will start in the fall of 2024. So think of uh, computer science for software development as a typical computer science program with the exception that is experiential learning. That means we provide all the theoretical foundations in a typical computer science program that one would see at U of T, at Waterloo, at, at, at Markham, uh, sorry, at Hill, at McMaster's, a typical computer science program, I mean, that's how we design it. All right, so why another computer science program? We have a huge deficit right now on STEM-related fields, and in particular computer science. So approximately 3.8% uh, of our workforce in Canada works actually in IT. So this is, this was a fifth report. And then for the elective courses, we have technical courses which they call streams. And we have three streams. We have a cloud, uh, we have uh, uh, data science, okay? um, and also uh, we have uh, software, software uh, health and security. Program requirements are 12 U units, uh, 12 U advanced functions, and 12 U biology or chemistry. A second math course is not required, but given the strong interest in the program, I would say I'm recommended. Systems languages like C, which is a different program in Paradise that was recommended. Self scripting for, uh, uh, for units. So these are some indicative courses that will be taken in, uh, uh, in, uh, in the core. And these are the typical courses that you see in a very good computer science program. And then we have supplemental CS courses like logic programming. Uh, so how do you write programs where you don't specify the algorithm, you say the computer algorithm. So here we have uh, the decisions that I mentioned. So here the focus is on experiential learning, as I mentioned, is on doing things as opposed to just learning in a, in a, in a classroom. We have very close connection with industry here at Markham and across Canada, we say. Uh, at, at York, we have a co program, so there is a lot of activity happening uh, with the contacts in industry. Uh, the specializations were selected very carefully. Uh, so data science, it's basically AI. Uh, cloud computing is all the infrastructure you need for massive computing. And, uh, and of course, security is, uh, is a very hot topic because right now we see 
security incidents that uh, we haven't seen in the past. Okay, so it's uh, something that's, that it's a, it's a major issue, both for our infrastructure, national security, corporate security, and so on. So, where I think the future is going and, uh, and what we will see probably in the next, in the, in the years to come. Um, so, where were 10 years ago, uh, so virtual machines have started getting some traction, and I'd like to link what, where we're getting and, and how this program fits. So 10 years ago, we were thinking about cloud as, okay, we were replicating computers, as I said. So instead of buying a physical computer, we had the computer and the software. So we say, if we need 10,000 PCs for the next half an hour, and let's provision 10,000 PCs. I mean, we don't need to buy and install 10,000 PCs. So where we will be probably 10 years from now and how this program will fit. So right now we have moved from virtual machines, which are virtual computers, to what we call microservices. So programs run in, in what we call containers and we can provision thousands or, or hundreds of thousands of these applications on demand. So the, the computing power we have right now and the capability of, of deploying applications is massive. You can uh, work on if you finish this program, of course as a software developer, uh, as a data scientist or analyst, uh, a cyber security analyst, cloud uh, computing specialist, cloud architect, uh, IT project manager, so we have a lot of also uh, courses with respect of uh, project management and business. And as I said, the concluding, the, the focal point of this program is on doing things as opposed to just being on the classroom and, uh, and, uh, and look at, uh, at some slides uh, that, uh, that I'll ask professors. Uh, so uh, we have co on the third year and then a capstone project on the third and fourth years, which uh, you have the opportunity either to work on something that you're passionate about, you may not start your own startup, uh, or uh, uh, work with um, the professor of research or work with one of our industrial partners for, uh, for conducting uh, work with them. So that means build uh, a lot of uh, This concept of uh, Silicon Valley, so this is the, the focal point of computing, right? And a lot of, lot of us think uh, Silicon Valley has, has a massive area where you know, the center of computing and computer science is, right? Uh, and then I thought, okay, how big is Silicon Valley? Is? So uh, it's pretty much south of East Palo Alto, all the way to Los Gatos, and uh, from the Porta Valley to uh, uh, to Milititas. Uh, 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 so I think we have three or four electric courses. So think of it as a very intensive computer science type of program. The stream courses are uh, very interesting question and very good question. So usually you see STEM courses starting from the third and fourth year, third year and then continuing the fourth year. For this program, we start introducing the students on the second year. And the reason is that suppose that you're interested in data science, but you don't want to miss from security. So we have also security courses even if you decide to go to a data science. So pretty much you get the full experience of all, of all streams. But, uh, very little by little we start on the second year the, the streams, which then go full steam on third and fourth year. It's a very well designed program. Say, very well -designed. I so hope this we'll presentation was useful for anyone who's interested in computer science. After the presentation is over, they spend the next five minutes answering any questions the crowd had. There were a lot of information built about different programs, so we decided to go check them out. Uh, so this is a 3D printer. So it uses this as a plastic filament, and then it goes through an extruder head that heats it up, and then it prints it. So it's like if you printed a piece of paper, and then put a layer and a layer and a layer and a layer and a layer. So it's actually making, it's a, it's a cat. So it starts at the bottom, prints a layer, moves it down, prints a layer, moves it down, prints a layer. You get a three-dimensional model of a cat. So you can use this to prototype things, you can make models, you can, I, we like to use it for building like little, utilitarian boxes and brackets and things, it's very handy for that. A great thing about this event was they had a lot of different food options for everybody. They had vegan, vegetarian, and gluten-free options. 
unfortunately we couldn't have anything because we weren't sure if it was halal or not. They were also giving out free water bottles and also had a coffee station. And that concludes our short tour. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please make sure to like, subscribe, and share. Bye!